Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for inviting us uh, to this wonderful um, uh, conference. Um, today we are going to talk a little bit about the organizational institutions and their uh, changes of first tier supplier in um, global garment value chains. Um, for the last few months, the Korean team uh, has been kind of you know, looking at first tier suppliers in, in electronic uh, industry and garment industry and other kind of industries in Korea, uh, you know, in terms of the, uh, I mean, looking at the complexity uh, of the field, you know, which the first tier suppliers is involved. Um, today we are focusing on the garment uh, value chains in the context of institutional change driven by actors. Uh, the case industry, the garment industry, uh, is important in the development of Korea, as, as you may know, right? Uh, Korea's industrialli uh, industrialization and upgrading, uh, but has been forgotten, even in Korea, uh, for a while, as the country has focused on, you know, heavy, very advanced, skill-oriented, uh, technology-oriented manufacturing. But we thought um, this uh, industry is still interesting because uh, it is the most global industry in Korea, uh, even though, <laughs> because it's kind of, you know, integrate the, you know, global buyers uh, in the garment industry, right? Uh, even though the operation is very global, but the organization itself is not really global. It's not yet. It's very Korean uh, style management. It has Korean style management and it has very hierarchical, but at the same time, um, you know, there is a very kind of rapid change in the field, the global value chain, the garment industry. And, you know, the first year supplier has been kind of changing a lot as well, uh, you know, required the changes in their roles. And, um, uh, and uh, the roles and um, the functions uh, in the global value chain. Um, you know, some kind of researchers, um, you know, argue that they are not just a subordinator of the, uh, the uh, buyers' firms. Uh, it has been kind of emerging as even bipolar, um, you know, bipolar uh, govern uh, the, the, the main player of the bipolar or multipolar uh, governance of the global value chain. So it has been a very important kind of actors in this field. And, you know, the, the organization itself uh, required, is required, uh, to change rapidly, uh, to be become a stra uh, strategy actors in the in the field. So um, we thought that this is a really interesting kind of case, and the organization itself, uh, the case we are really focusing on the one case uh, at the moment because we are in the still pro uh, pro uh, pro. Um, I mean, this is the work in progress. So, um, but uh, still, it it kind of shows kind of interesting dynamics, the change in the field and. Uh, the, the actors' kind of roles, kind of different roles to make very market changes in this field. Okay, so today uh, we are going to, um, I'm going to kind of you know, uh, show you some questions, um, tell you the questions and background, and one case study, the Korean uh, first tier supplier in the global value chain, uh, the garment value chain, and the role of global actors. Um, they are involved in norm changes and challenges, and actors. Um, we are also focusing on the actors' roles and responses to the change. And uh, finally, we are kind of demonstrating uh, certain interim organizational outcomes so far. Okay, the question. Again, this is work in progress. So questions still in the work in progress. Uh, but we are interested in institutional change driven by the role agency. Uh, uh, the institutional change is an outcome of purposeful institutional work, right? So, I mean, we are actually focusing on the actors and, uh, you know, the, uh, the players of the change of the norm in the field. But uh, a lot of work, um, you know, focusing on the institutional work, uh, uh, didn't really focusing on or didn't really kind of you know, regard the social structures uh, or let me put it this way, the downplay, uh, how, this is a typo, how social structure can enable or shape the varieties of the actor's choices. Uh, we thought that, you know, strategy is still important, but the uh, social structure that they embedded, that they are embedded is still important to make varieties of the outcomes 
So we want to kind of you know, focus both on the strategic part and at the same time the, the structure that they have been embedded. In the context of changing uh, GBC governance and increasing market pressure alongside um, the rise of fa uh, fast fashion, have you heard fast fashion? Um, you know, Zara or H&M, um, those kind of, you know, uh, trend is quite pervasive th uh, in this industry. And um, this actually um, really kind of pervasive after the post-global uh, crisis in 2008 or now. Uh, this actually uh, triggers uh, the changes in terms of roles of the first tier suppliers. So let me uh, get back to it uh, later on. But you know, our main uh, question is how do these changing exo uh, exogenous conditions affect the first tier suppliers' ways of working globally? And do these exogenous conditions lead to you know, known changes within the first tier suppliers? And what roles uh, globalizing actors play in the process of norm changes in determining speed and scope change. Okay, this is garment, uh, garment uh, global value chain. This is a bit kind of complex, right? So you need to kind of follow the whole uh, details. But you know, here I just wanted to kind of show you the expanding role of first year suppliers, right? They are kind of uh, upgrading, functional upgrading uh, to sourcing and also research and design as well. So they are uh, very heavily integrated and expanding their roles um, uh, to the ones um, which actually was played by the buyers previously, right? And at the same time, uh, it has uh, also expanding geographically, right? Uh, these days, a lot of kind of companies are kind of focusing on their manufacturing in um, not just South. Um, uh, Latin America, but Southeast Asia, Vietnam, not China. China is decri uh, declining these days. The South, uh, um, you know, Asia like Vietnam or Laos, Cambodia, are the main kind of you know destinations of this uh, first-year suppliers manufacturing. So global kind of expansion is also strategically choice, uh, chosen, chosen, and um, the expansion is quite uh, remarkable. Okay. Okay. In this context, the key changes of global government uh, value chain and its first year suppliers. Um, you know, I'm just wanting to focus. Oh, sorry, this is too busy, but <laughs> um, just wanting to kind of focus on the complexity of the changes that they uh, face these days. Uh, the complexities are probably three fourths, right? And it's complex, it's not just, you know, kind of, we are not just focusing on the cost efficiency itself, right? I mean, there are, you know, enormous pressure to uh, contain, contain the cost. But at the same time, the quality issue or style issue or, you know, the social compliance are very important, becoming more important these days, right? So the, so very different kind of directions of the, uh, the changes are actually kind of required and it increased the complexity in the field, right? Um, so increasing complexity of GVC governance and um, first year suppliers grow, uh, growing responsibilities in production and GVC governance. They are playing uh, as a double agency role, for example, of quality assurance and social compliance. Their own procurement of the lead firm's requirement as well as their agency role of the, over the uh, second tier suppliers. Right, so they are subcontracting themselves, right? So they also monitor and control the second tier suppliers, right? Uh, so these kind of, you know, uh, conflicting role as a complier and at the same time, uh, what, um, the buyer uh, is actually kind of giving them a very kind of um, interesting position, right, in the, in the field. And also, uh, they are continuing the dependence on the, the asymmetric power of the lead firms. And there is another kind of uh, complexity in terms of market pressure, right? They have multiple burdens, as I just mentioned, to meet quality and styles, so increasing audits for quality. And cost efficiency, uh, there is privacy bidding system going on, and flexibility. Um, there is postponed strategy, so they have to wait until the very last minute and then you know, start manufacturing, right? So there is kind of lots of kind of you know, different pressure over them. 
an emergence of online sales and the increasing demands for small batch <coughs> OEM production is another kind of you know, challenge. Uh, it decreases the market share because, um, because of the size. They cannot just afford the small batch in, uh, production. But because of the technological change, the online system, uh, you know, there is a big challenge for them, right? And the other kind of you know, important change is demise of market intermediaries. Uh, there used to be a lot of kind of intermediaries in Korea, right? So the first year suppliers are just dealing with the intermediaries, not the buyers themselves, right? But they are devising, replaced by the direct negotiation and co coordination between buyers and uh, first year suppliers. Uh, so this is another kind of in the phase of first year suppliers to be strategic, to become a strategic actor. Okay, so we did 20 face-to-face -face interviews within a Korea uh, first year suppliers, uh, company A in the garment industry, managers in various functions from the factory in Ho Chi Minh City. We visited the uh, city in Vietnam, January 2018. And we also did some interviews uh, with both executives and team leaders in sales, HR, sourcing, R&Ds, uh, compliance from uh, headquarters in Seoul uh, last August and September. So contextual overview of the case is quite similar, as I just mentioned, in terms of changes, right? Rapid and constant growth uh, in the 21st century, and now the second largest Korea uh, first tier supplier in garment industry, uh, the company. And also, their production globally diversified, uh, but uh, predominantly based in uh, Vietnam. They do strong R&D capacity. They do uh, ODM these days heavily. And um, this is interesting because a lot of Korean firms are very hierarchical. But this firm, maybe because of the simplicity of their, you know, previously uh, previous simplicity of their production, and just follow, um, you know, uh, the norms or you know the the, the rules by uh, set by the buyer. Uh, you know the the company just kind of focusing on uh, the performance itself. So they were really highly decentralized and team-based and highly adaptable and flexible, low level of uh, standardization of global working, uh, limited roles of coordination and control played uh, by head, uh, headquarters. Uh, they also give a lot of importance to step empowerment. Uh, but as I mentioned before, the founding owner's dominance in decision making is quite strong. And also, um, they are born global, uh, probably not yet because uh, uh, parent country nationals dominant uh, in the managerial hierarchy. So they're not really kind of recruiting a lot of um, you know, managers from the locals, right? But the changes, this is just an overview of the you know, rapid growth uh, these days of the company. And this is kind of, you know, uh, uh, kind of complex their uh, position uh, in the global value chain uh, with the, you know, relationship with buyers and you know, sourcing companies and so on. Okay, but um, you know, as I mentioned before, they have a lot of changes. They face a lot of changes. Organ and the uh, organizations perceive uh, the changes for the last few, uh, few years. Um, you know, there are two uh, forces. Uh, one is exogenous triggers uh, of the change since the global financial crisis. Um, the recent uh, sales decreases. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the sales has been really rapidly increased uh, until 2016 or uh, 15, but last two years, they have never kind of had a decrease uh, in terms of sales or revenues. But for the first time, because of competition, the increase in competition, they have faced the rest, um, you know, decrease in terms of their sales. And um, you know, this actually assists the persuasion of the urgency of the change, right? And complexity of the governance, a few events of compliance violation by the you know, subcontractors, and desperate awareness of currently unavailable next destination. They just aware that uh, there is no way to go as a big uh, first year suppliers. So they need to achieve cost efficiency as much as possible here in Vietnam or their you know, current location. And also, as I mentioned before, the extinction of market intermediaries. Buyers want to work directly with us. That's what they are uh, aware. 
and also they know that uh, locals know better what buyers because buyers hire a lot of HCN host country nationals uh, want. So they want to kind of hire more, not one, but they know that they need to hire more HCNs, right? To do that, uh, they need to kind of standardize their practices, not um, you know, flexible uh, practices as uh, they were. And some internal influences as well. Uh, so there are changes in everyday work incorporating their com uh, communication with both buyers and locals. And there is organizationally accumulated social skills as they grow, right? As they grow in the you know, complex field, uh, as well as um, the uh, production and research skill facilitated. Um, so probably one of the kind of immediate change is norm change. Previously, as I mentioned before, and currently as well, the highly decentralized and most team-based organization in the field valuing autonomous, empowered, dedicated staff from the bottom to the top layer. So these kind of norms were really kind of heavily embedded uh, in this um, company. But they, um, especially the, the top managers, wanted to kind of you know, implement or create the norms, new norms, seeking standardization, as I mentioned before, to you know, course containment, uh, for course containment and at the same time, uh, the standardize the, uh, the, the, uh, the ways of working to hire more you know, locals, right? And codification of roles and responsibility of the staff. And they want to localize uh, the practices. Plan for the placement H uh, PCN, uh, replacement PCNs with HCNs. And they want to pursue coordinated centralization, which was never uh, tried before, orchestrated by the HQs. Examples of the implementation processes, something like that. Documenting rules and responsibility of the key function, collecting best practices and transfer knowledge globally, seeking autom automation and in production, and developing a unique compliance schemes. So uh, we identified uh, probably four types of the rules by the actors, right? So norm creators, especially by the headquarters, new CEO, top management team framing the new norm, and new chief executive of the local factory who was recently appointed also kind of pursue these new um, norms. And there are facilitators and implementers, supporting functional uh, managers, HR managers, for example, sorry, and uh, compliance managers. They said, my key roles in the process, well, I'm trying to define roles and responsibilities uh, of uh, each manager position and document them step by step. It's not an easy job, but I think it's necessary to change, right? That's what they actually say. But, you know, the leaders of sales or R&D teams, uh, which was the core workforce of the former team based flexible system, they are reluctant, right? And they want to kind of, you know, uh, negotiate to slow down the pace. Right. So they said they fully understand the share of the uh, view, but they need to adjust the speed, right? And there is, of course, rigid and passive compliers, like, you know, relatively old factory managers. They want to kind of, you know, uh, actually need to recruit, train, and work uh, with local managers. Uh, they seek stable production, so they need, uh, they need uh, kind of stability with current system, not the rapid change. Right. So the interim outcomes, I'll just finish it within uh, 30 seconds. Uh, in the process of known change, multiple institution logics coexist, right? They know they need to change, but they are not really uh, in the process of sense making yet, right? There are different interests and different norms in their mind, right? So no experience, also there is organizational dilemma as well no experience and high uncertainty of uh, expected outcomes, right? From an implementer of norms set by the lead firms to a strategic actor is a really hard job for them, right? And also there are inter, uh, internal conflict because there are kind of different norms taken by different actors, right? So the scope and speed of the changes are determined by these two factors. So changes is likely to be accretion rather than uh, to be displacement of the or the accommodation of the previous norms, 
right? So not like what um, institutional work suggests. You know, the rapid change or the success of the change is not always taking place because of the, the structure that they have and the internal politics of the, uh, uh, or within the organization. Thank you very much. Thank you.